Good. So good evening all, Eve and Connie. So VK2UJ, VK2CON. Uh, the presentation tonight is the fastest way to dismount, dismount a bike. So I've sent around a video where we show how to get on and off a tandem bike. The reason why we made the video is on, on the internet, there was a request from a few people to know how to get on and off. When you're on single bike, it's pretty easy. On si double, you have to think about it. But if, obviously, tonight is not about this. It's about a bicycle crash that we had together. And I also mm -hmm. crashed on my own a few years ago. So we'll go through uh, some of the uh, what happened in there. Uh, if you have any question at all, please ask as we go so that at the end we can finish a presentation. There are a few questions that came in like uh, people were saying, well, uh, Connie will not let you drive again and she'll be the one taking the front seat. And the answer is, I don't fit in the front seat. she doesn't fit it. <laughs> Connie doesn't fit at the front, the bike is too long. And I weigh 77, she weighs 52. Whoever's at the front has to hold the weight, so it's a, it's a bit difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Together, uh, the other question: people who knew, people who know that I fly, were asking me because I had a sling. Said, "Was that a flying accident?" <laughs> and I said, "I was flying all right, but the landing wasn't too good." So, <laughs> so uh, this is what we're going to cover tonight. And uh, the first thing is on your bike is when we tell people we are commuting, riding a tandem bike to work, they all think about this. You know, it's romantic and. But in reality, what it looks like is this. Hey! Who's like the back? Is that you? <laughs> so this is what, more well, what it looks like. And I've got a uh, couple of videos to show you. The first one, which is on the VK2MB TV, which you haven't seen yet, but you'll be able to see. This is our commute to work what it looks like. So we've got seven minutes of a one hour ride. So you all know where that is, obviously, the yeah. speed bridge. No, that's in the way. No, it looks wet, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a transit, the T line, the tandem line. And uh, by the way, we didn't have a GoPro, so I've just used a uh, device that normally holds a light on the bike to hold a standard camera. So if you want to pass this around. <laughs> okay. So in here, we are overtaking the cars. They're a bit slow on hey, going. What speed you do here at the I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about we'll talk about it offline. Are you changing at the moment? Yes, yes, we're attending. Right. Now, uh, the funny thing is, we made that video, put it on YouTube, and the first time Connie saw it on YouTube, she said, "I've never seen like, what it looks like at the front." Yeah. <laughs> you don't ask what you know. <laughs> <laughs> So now we're at Tremont. I know what that's like. I wouldn't say it when you went up the hill. Yeah. <coughs> so that, it's about 35 kilometers an hour here. Well, they know us, they get to know us, and then we're more visible. Uh, this is uh, Miller Street, uh, Bluey's Point. And Tim, I've put one for you in there. You always say Sacre Bleu. <laughs> yep. Yes, it is. 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 Y
was a school taste ago. Yeah. Yeah. I used to like my school bike used to go every day. Jeez, you know how it's all right. Did they have houses there then? So I guess with the changing we get a lot more power. It goes faster, and it's funny, we just discovered that tandem is was slower than the other one. We just found out two weeks ago why, and we fixed the problem. It's because Connie's further behind on this tandem than we used. The other one was shorter. Now, if Connie leans on me, we gain about four, six kilometers an hour on speed bridge. That's the scenario of the bridge, so if you've never cycled on the bridge, then you would have never seen it. You can't walk there. Now this has been added on that side since uh, September 11. We used to be able to walk on the train line. So it's actually narrower than it used to be. It's very narrow. So this is where I had my first accident in 1995. I overtook someone that didn't stay on his side and uh, he cut me off. Remember that? It seemed like Billy and Billy was more angry than you. <laughs> angry? I'm surprised you were to cycle across the there's a lane. So the east side of the bridge is a walkway. The west side is for push bike only. Sorry, I'm just driving the Okay. <laughs> well, if you haven't, if you've never cycled, you wouldn't know on the bridge. So. Yep. So when you get out at the adversary hill, you've got a bit of a... Where are you talking to? Keep watching. Market Street. Market Street. So we're going through a Barangaroo. As Connie what? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So this is typically what we do every morning when we go to work. They've redone the, the pub here, it's beautiful. And that's about it. Yeah. The rest of it is. Now, if you think this is an interesting commute, think about this guy. It's commute. <laughs> There's thousands of these type of videos called Urban Down Hills. Yeah. And they've got contests where they go in places where the city is mainly down. Uh, Hilly. So, Connie and I are practicing for this. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you are, not me. <laughs> and look at the pole. This was uh come on. Yeah, it's too much coffee. Or something. No, that's normal size. 
Now you need to see where Danny Macaskill does his commute from. That's in um, Scotland. Now, if you look for him on the internet, he's got all sort of amazing things that all sort of push bikes, not all mountain bikes. Now, check this one. Okay, so just a bit of entertainment. Now, after the second accident, because Connie was in the second, I was, she was in the first one, people were asking, a lot of people were asking, are you going to stop cycling? Well, no. Uh, if you've ridden a horse all your life and you fall off the horse, you'll get on a horse back to go in a hospital. It's not, it, like if, you, if it's the first time you do it, then you'll probably not get back onto a horse, but if you do this every day, Connie and I have been cycling for at least together 24 years on the bike. So this is what the stats are. So the blue lines is how many kilometers a year, and the uh, brown line is the total. So there's three bikes. We did 3,000 on the first made in China by or Taiwan, which we broke. We broke, every, they've changed everything on that bike. Then we met people that have been around the world with bikes, and uh, we got one custom made, which we did 65,000 kilometers with it. The reason we changed it, we couldn't find parts anymore. After 19 years, it was too, too hard. And we bought another bike just at the end of 2010, and we've done 10,000 kilometers. The it stars are where we crash, or where I crash, and we crash together. The reason for the, the 3,000 a year here is we still have the odometer running, but we were not checking every year how many we did during the year, how many kilometers. And I was working 24 hours a day, seven days a week there for a year and a half, so we didn't cycle at all. Uh, but yeah, this is what we've done so far. And we've already done, since the, the crash, another 1,400 kilometers. So we're still uh, riding quite a bit. What did you do in Australia? I know, we went to Europe. So the reason we had a cost, the bike custom made at the time it was because a lot of people went around the world with their bikes, so we decided to the first time we go back to Canada, we'll do Europe. But the thing is, we only did 4,000 kilometers in Europe. The other 6,000 was done here, just going to work and practicing or doing all sorts of things. So probably in probably hasn't worked <coughs> No, correct. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing, too, is like in 92, when we bought the tandem, we had it made. It cost $2,500. Don't know why people have to ask you how much it costs. And every time they ask, they, they tell you, you stupid, why are you buying this? More than a car, this is, we, we got treated all, all sort of things, you know, by people. <laughs> in here, we bought a, today's a $10,000 bike with the uh, change, the money, or 8,000. With the exchange, by the time when we bought it, it was about six. And when people ask us how much, we say six, say, oh yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so it's like people got used to equipment, cost more or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the biggest difference for us is this bike is uh, aluminum. It's very, very stiff. The other one used to bend a lot. This one's very stiff. Good, baby. 
No, because you waste your power onto bending the bike. So we go a lot faster up here now than we used to. So instead of having just uh, wasting your energy in, in bending, yeah, more drive, thank you. Accident number one, 1995. This is when Colin 8 used to be on the first page of the newspaper. 24,000 kilometers at the time, I had to have the accident on the only kilometer of a bicycle path between Manly and the airport. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't typically like bicycle path, but anyway, so that was the end. And um, yeah, so that was the first one. And the second accident was the 3rd of July, almost a year now, at 75,000 kilometers. And the Manly Daily had this uh, thing <laughs> <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Uh, maybe a few members of the club said BD. <laughs> okay, the actual ride, the big ride, the one we did last year, is a ride we've done hundreds of times. We love it, it's a nice drive, and the, the car drivers love cyclists on that road as well. So, so basically, we leave from Manly, we just go um, Wakers Parkway, a bit of Wakers Parkway, and then we come all the way here to the club, and from the club here, all the way down to Church Point, it's downhill and fast. And uh, there's a couple of uphill, but typically you've got enough swing to, to grab it. This is long and boring, but it's a good exercise. 53 kilometers, it's a night. We used to do it almost every Friday because Connie and I were not working on Fridays. And uh, there's no cars at all, so it was good fun. And now if you look at the profile, the elevation profile, it looks very impressive. But it's because of the scale, obviously. You've got 50 kilometers and 200 meters. And we crash at 23 kilometers from home. We know because we reset it to zero. And if you know, 23 kilometers, I reckon we actually <laughs> fell the hill there. Now, this is what Mikhail's Creek looked like, or the turn where we were. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's a bit more trees or whatever. <laughs> we were supposed to go get a picture, but it didn't happen. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> what happened is we were turning to the right, and we had two cars racing up the hill. They were over the line. And somehow, both of us, our brain was not, we couldn't be convinced in leaning the bike and off. And we kept sliding to the left, and the edge here is really nasty. As soon as you come down the, the ceiling, there's about a one inch, and then you're on the gravel. We keep going to the left, to the left, to the left, and then we just couldn't go to the... But I reckon what actually happened, I have, is this. I reckon we hit a souffle there. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just went out the road. Now, the funny thing is, Connie decided to get off the road, no, sorry, off the bike before we got off the road. Yeah, she got off. And I kept going in the bush <laughs> with the bike. <laughs> and we don't know what actually happened, but it appears like the bike catapulted into my back. So it's a typical bicycle accident. And evidence exhibit A3, there's a hole here, and it looks like it's been cut by something. So we still haven't figured out what on the bike would have actually cut the back. <laughs> <laughs> and the jacket was all... <laughs> but Connie got off the bike. I ended up bush, and just next to a big rock. I saw I got lucky with this. And uh, yeah, so that's what happened. Had the drivers stopped or were they gone? Oh, they, they, they were long gone. We, we started to... I mean, I don't, I'm not blaming it on them. It's me that didn't navigate well or whatever. But it, I got spooked with this and then... It wasn't then the backseat driver. Sorry? It wasn't the backseat driver. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now, let's talk about what happens when you have an accident. First thing, immobilization. When you break bones, you're not supposed to move it wherever it's broken. There's a lot of reason. You lose a lot of blood when you break bones, and also you want to reduce any future damage. Just two sort of, you can break something open that's not actually fully break it, broken, or it can go through the skin, whatever. So you're not supposed to. So 
What did we do? Our first crash, I crashed about two-thirds of the harbor bridge. I sunk all the rest of the bridge. I went down the stairs. You don't know if you know, but the bicycle path finishes with six flights of stairs. Then I went up. I was going to pick up Connie at North Sydney, so I was on my own, so going north. Then I told a guy, can you tell the girl that's waiting at the corner of Miller to come and pick me up? Then Connie came, we met halfway. I said, I don't think I can go home like this. So we went back the other way, up the sixth flight of stairs, <laughs> cycled all the way to the Manly Ferries. There were no Manly Ferries at the time, there were jet cats at night. Navigate the bike into the jet cat, get to Manly, go up to Sydney Road, because we used to live at Fairlight. Change, take a shower, and I said, I better go to the hospital. Then we took a cab to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. I could hardly walk, so. <laughs> yeah. Accident number two, we crash at the bottom here, uh, halfway between here and Church Point. We get, put the bike on the, someone's ute. Then we put the bike here in the, the thing, try to call a cab. You can't get a cab here. It's impossible. There's no address to start with, so nothing works. So we went to see Tony's, the, um, the uh, liquor place, the vintage place. And Tony has an account, so he called a cab, went home. We got so lucky, we got this cab driver that knew all the shortcuts to go to Manly. It was a bit... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we got Manly, I changed <laughs> again, and then decided to go to the hospital, so we walked to Manly Hospital. So remember, if you break bones, do nothing, get to the hospital right away. Diagnostic. 1995, complex CBR uh, plateau fracture. So that's the top of your CBR. Um, I had few cuts and broken helmet. 2015, me, Connie had almost nothing, br a lot of bruises, but fractured scapula, six broken ribs. So this is not me, that's a picture I took from the uh, book. Three of them were uh, displaced and uh, broken a cremion joint. So this joint here that you've got over your shoulder just snapped off. I had a puncture along and we broke the two helmets. We actually cracked the helmet. So it's a good thing we had the helmet. This is what uh, it looks like. I can't see much in there. Now that I know what it is, I know. But I'll show you the next picture, which is an MRI, which is a lot easier to see. This is, this is the shoulder socket. So normally, this thing should be rotated. It was rotated 90 degrees out. And this is the scapula at the back. You know the, the, the wing that you've got at the back? You're not supposed to see, so that's supposed to be all stuck together. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, they can remove bits as well. Look, if you come here, yeah, they've actually there. cut that to, to be able to, uh, yeah, it's in, they give me the CDs or DVDs. There's thousands and thousands of pictures. What they do is they've got a software that actually overlay, so they can drill down and zoom in. And it became a very entertaining case. Everybody wanted to see me. Can you play operation with that? You know, take things out and put things Yeah, maybe. It's like 3D printing. It's ah, it's, 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 it's well, like yeah, 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 yeah. But it was quite interesting because I got there and then they chat, chat, chat and everything. They start a few radio, uh, radiographies and then they do this and you guys said, how did you get here? So oh, we walked. So from where? So well, man, yeah, but so well, looking at what we see, you shouldn't be standing up. We believe you're not only standing up on the other yeah? So they put me on CS CSU. They say. I see you all night. They say, well, we'll put you under observ observation because that's not normal. But then they... And, yeah, so... How did you know who I am? You could have called us for a reference, would So let's, let's look at the repair now. So how do we fix all that? 1995. <laughs> so, uh, can you pass this around? So, they've been removed. So, in the old time, they used to remove things after a year. Uh, now, they tend to keep it because they cause more problems than removing. So, so, 
So what you've got here, obviously, is they reinforce the bone. And I also had a skin graft. So these, not skin graft, a bone graft. So they have to do a big hole here to get some bone. They use it as, as packing, put it there. Today they use coral to do this. Sorry, today they use? Cor coral. 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 Yeah. coral. Yeah. A friend of mine had a similar accident, no graft. They just, and I bet you that in not so long, in the near future, these screws will be made of a material that actually get with the bone eventually. Strong enough to use at the time and eventually will. Gee, don't keep all my screws in my workshop. <laughs> <laughs> you do anyway, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Now, the repair for 2015 was 20 years later. They've used what they call arthroscopy. Arthro means join, scope means view. I personally prefer the name heel surgery because arthroscopy is just about looking while heel sur surgery is looking. So I've got a bit of a quiz here. So you know that scope means view. So what do you call an instrument to see very, very far? Telescope. What do you call an instrument to see very, very, very close? Thank you. What do you call an instrument to look around perimeter? What do you call an instrument to see through a wall? A window! A window! So arthroscopy, it, it's not that old. Uh, 1806, when they first started, and even 1912, it was on animal and dead body, where they wanted to do some research, or they wanted to see what happened. And the first time they've actually done surgery was in 1962. And in the 70s, remember the old way of doing it was a tube with a lens and the light at the end and they had to just look in there and with the uh, all the fiber optic and the, the television and the camera now today it's flexible they can do whatever they want so it's very popular now but look the first uh, real surgery on the shoulder was made in 1987 so it's not it's not very old yeah. and in fact the doctor I had Dr. Marcus Marcus here, it was uh, rather young looking to the fact that there's someone in my room at the hospital say, your doctor is really young. He said, yeah, I'm happy about that because I, I want someone who uses uh, new technology. And uh, the way they did it, they only did four holes to fix the damage that you've seen. And uh, what they use is a, a camera, obviously, and these wheels allow them to turn the camera and look at all kinds of place. They do a they push a tube in a hole, and then from the tube they can enter things in and out. And they use other instruments to, uh, to do the fixes. So that's the fixes, the fix that they've done. There's two in there. There's a screw here that they've taken the shoulder bit, that the, the socket bit that was at the wrong place, rotated it, and put a screw in. These are two buttons, like buttons you've got on your shirt. And they use Kevlar wire, like the sailing that they use for the sails, and they just spin it around and then pull until they bring it to where they want it, and then they do a knot. And that's going to stay there forever. They won't remove it unless there's an issue, but that's in here now. He was really, really proud to show me this picture, because this is showing that it's quite smooth the surface when you join the two bones, which means that this will close and I won't have problem with arthritis later on. And instead of having, when the socket is closed, instead of being having a step, it's very, very smooth. And this is the most important thing so you don't have any problem later on. And scapula, they do nothing. It just grows back to whatever. Uh, ribs, they do nothing and eventually you forget about it also. You sneeze or... <laughs> <laughs> the first time I sneezed, I didn't know. Uh, it was like, oh, so all the time I thought when you feel a sneeze coming, it just me. But now, and 
even today, almost a year after, I will have some time. I will feel it if something happens. But uh, they do nothing. They just give it time. They can't do anything. Well, about it. Yeah, this, this place one will finish a bit yeah. like this. Yeah. But they don't. It's a protection for your lung, and so they don't have a, a structural uh, purpose apart from protecting your organs. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 The third of July last year. Yeah. 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 And the only thing I've got is this used to be more flat, and now there's a bit of a bump there. But you know, it's like <coughs> it's quite true <coughs> because you've got two or most of the things. They always compare with the other one. With my leg, my arm, or whatever, they always come in. And uh, the healing process. So when you break bones, six weeks. As soon as they fix it, it'll take six weeks. So the bone is just eventually grow and then reattach. You can't do anything. You have to listen to them, you sit down, and you don't, don't move. I'd like to talk about this one. I had four hospital stays in my life because of the two accidents. And the people who work there, they are, it's a miracle. They are so good. The nurses are incredible. The people who are their station, every time I've been there, have been problems and problems and problems. It's not a resort. It's not a five-star resort. It's not a five-star restaurant. People are not there to serve you. Sit down and relax and shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and Connie has been in my, she came to my the room where I was. I had multiple patients because I was there to bring uh, for, for a full week. Two of them were there for the full week. The other day changed almost every second day. And you know, it was really, really bad. And um, I had to get out. The nurse was asking, are you waiting for someone? Because I was sitting in front of the elevator. And I said, no, I can't. No. Dad, your wife is a bitch, you know? It's family drama in the room and all sort of thing and people swearing and, and calling the nurses. Oh, it, was, it was incredible. But then eventually you get out of there. But public or public? I did both. I did both. No difference. The people who work there, they are amazing. A lot of people who are patient there, they are not patient. You're there for the day. What's the, what's the problem with Something is one hour late. You're not going anyway. So then we got home. It was quite easy. The only thing is, it was difficult to stay in the same position for multiple hours. So I used to sleep in the bed and on the couch. So you sleep on the bed until it wakes you up, and then you go on the couch until it wakes you up. And then you, uh, but that went pretty well. And then uh, then I went to work, and I started to go to work gradually. So I did a day or two days in the first week and etc. And then I was full time. I only need two days of work to know that. Well, because everything is done online, uh, it's to keep my sanity at the hospital, I was doing my work. So um, I may be there, so I can use either hand. So I'll write all my email left hand. And Connie and I were the only one on that project, the two of us. On the, so I was, it was easy to work. So I did that. Now, let's say it's healed. What do we do? First thing is toxic mobilization. So your arm, you don't want your arm to become all melted together and things that can't move. So as soon as you can, or as soon as they think you can, you start doing some movement. So they give you a sort of exercise and whatever it is. And eventually, you can do a bit more. And they, they used to, I don't have a wall here, but the uh, wall crawling competition where you use your finger to bring your arm up. So you're not using any of your muscles. And then when you, your arm is at the top, then you bring it down. So there's a lot of things to do when you do as an as, uh, exercises. And then eventually what you need to do, and we're talking weeks in there, we're not talking days. Eventually what you need to do is develop the range. So eventually you'll be able to do what you used to do develop the full range, but then you will realize that eventually that your muscle won't bring your arm there. It's not the range that's missing, it's the muscle. Eventually they give you low bearing, so then you have all these elastic that they give you and pulleys, that you have to pull for that at the top of the door, and then they give you all sorts of exercises, and then you start developing your muscles that way.
And then there's different elastic color of elastic, so some are stronger, and then you start doubling them, and etc. So the funny thing about this here is there's an iteration. You might have developed the main muscles, the main uh, action that you do, but eventually you'll do something that you do every day. You realize, oh, I can't do that anymore. Then you have to start again with a new exercise that you develop, and then work on this. Now, I did very, very well, and I've proven to them what they already know, but if you listen to them, it's going to work. And you talk to a lot of people who have injuries, but they're not, fine, they're not able to resolve this thing. Two or three years after, I still feel pain or whatever, I can't move my arm. They say, have you done physio? Yeah, yeah, I've been once a week. It doesn't work that way. When you go see the physio once a week, they give you 10, 20, 30 different exercises. Each of the exercises you need to do about 20 times, 20 iterations, three times in a row. People just go there, do the exercises with them, go home and they do nothing. So what I did is everything they asked me to do was the trigger. Sorry, God, I can't help you tonight a bit of time to do my exercises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I can't do the vacuum. I have to do it. <laughs> well, talking about it is if you, the reason why you've got muscles and movement is because you do these things that you do every day. The quicker you start doing this thing every, that you do every day, the quicker you'll see where you need to do the exercises so you can increase. Six months after the accident, I had been back flying, I was training people. One day I went to refuel a helicopter, which normally someone else does. And I went, come to take the, the hose, and I couldn't. Because it's very heavy, it's a long, long hose. So I went back home, developed an exercise that would allow me to actually do this. And the week after, when I went to back to work, no problem. But most people, what they do is they, they're not listening to what their body is saying, and they're not trying to develop. When I had the accident, the doctor said, he will try to do his best to fix my socket. But he said, before the accident, I could go all the way here. And the doctor said, after the accident, you won't be able to go any further than this. So now I'm stuck here. I used to be able to do this. But <laughs> 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 and when I went to see the physio, it was thing, every week I'd go see the physio, and I came like this one day, because it was an impossible thing for me to do. So he was quite impressed. And the other day I came like this. He said, one thing you'll never be able to do, but you won't, no, he didn't say never be able. One thing you have a lot of problems to do, like everybody who has that kind of accident, is to scratch you here on the other side like this. So the week after I came, I said, hey, look, well, I can do He said, ah, oh, no, no, you tricked me. You're using your wrong arm. He thought. <laughs> There is nothing that I used to do. Uh, I can do chin-ups and push-ups, and I can do everything. No, no, no. They think I wouldn't be able to go any further than this, because I'm back to where I used to be. So, you know, uh, yeah, so anything that gets that blocks, I just work on it. And I'm very I'm listening to these things. And that's why I went back to we. Yeah, that's why I went back to doing what we used to do as fast as possible to avoid, as soon as it's safe to, because if you go too fast when the bones is not, but as soon as it's, it's safe to. And back on the bike, so in 1995, <laughs> I went to the doctor one day, he said, well, now you can start with 25% of your weight. So you put a scale on and said, this is what it feels. But I said, can I go back slightly? He looked at me and said, you know, it's a thing, I do nothing, Colin does everything on the back. And he said, yeah, so we started cycling, and we had a crutches at the back, and we used to stop at a cafe, and I had to wait. Colin would give me the crutches, so I can you know, <laughs> the back. And I remember I used to work at the airport, that's where I had the accident, and uh, on Thursday I was on crutches, and the Friday I had the ex you know, x-rays and meeting the doctor, and on Monday I just came in to work with the bike. And that's a long run, it's like, well, from many to the airport. And uh, so I started right away. There's no point of waiting. If it's fixed, we have to get it going. 2015, 
It's longer before you get on the bike because when it's a leg injury, you use the bike to work the muscles and develop the, the shoulder. The problem with the foot bike is you get all the vibration on the shoulder. So it's, it's a bit trickier. The doctor told me two or three times not to get onto the bike. But we have to get the bike out of the repair <coughs> shop. So we went just when I was about a few days short of racing, I could. And uh, the bike wasn't fixed properly, so whoever tested the bike didn't test it properly, and the fork was off by four mil. And so the bike was pulling on one side. So I just, we just tried it, didn't work, so the guy said, I'll fix it. So we had another week to wait, which was good. So then the week after, when we got the bike. Then uh, we came here for Georgia. Uh, uh, we've been riding to work and everything. Uh, the first fasteners needed a bit of tuning. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we went back to the accident site. We did that right again. And we just to understand what was special about it. That turn is just a single a normal turn. There are turns that are very challenging, very difficult. But that particular turn where we went off the road is just a gentle turn, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's... Like design, something like, something like no, that. we didn't suddenly, we just... It oh. went very slow, we didn't get into the turn, so... Yeah. We didn't lean enough. Yeah. 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 So, uh... So we've been riding since. Uh, the bike has been fixed, five hundred dollars, two helmets, or whatever. Needed a new wheel at the front. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, and I have nothing to say. Like I've been in plumbing cars again, and been, been doing all sorts of things. It's like if nothing happened. And uh, when they check me back to be plumbing.